Welcome back aboard Seawind, our 32-foot cutter built by Allied Boat Company in 1978. If you're new here, we're happy to have you, and as always, we couldn't be more grateful for everyone who watches our show. Please subscribe if you haven't already, as it helps others discover our channel. And don't forget to turn on the notifications so you don't miss anything we post. So now, last week we left our anchorage in Fort Lauderdale, exited Port Everglades, and began our sail away from the United States. Goodbye, Fort Lauderdale! And out into the Atlantic Ocean. The sun is setting, and we are sailing in a beautiful 10 to 15 knot breeze, quickly approaching the western limits of the Gulf Stream, which will help push our boat northeast. We're doing it, people. Our destination of Port Lucaya lies roughly 90 miles away, and is where we will be checking into the Bahamas country for our second time. Last season, we left Key Biscayne, making our way to the island of Bimini. This time, Katie and I decided to travel a different path altogether, with new places to see and experience. So without further ado, welcome to episode 63 of Sailing Sea Wind. This is how we cook on Sea Wind. We have a gimbaled stove, so when we're sailing, the thing rocks to keep the pasta or pan or whatever you have on here level. You can see it working. We had interior. Uh, you're brave, not holding on to anything, holding your camera. He's brave. He forgot the roll, one hand for you, one hand for the boat. There you go. I was just sitting here thinking when I was shoveling corn chips in my face that it was just like, oh, so nice to be out here on a little passage shoveling chips in my face because that's like the only thing I want to eat when we're sailing for some reason is chips. Of all kinds, I don't discriminate. Corn chips, plantain chips, regular chips. I just want all the chips. We just lost reception. We have another boat that's sailing off of our port bow. Looks like they're going in the same direction. I have some pasta water on. And life is good aboard Sea Wind. We are cruising at about five and a half, six knots, you think? Six, six knots over ground. The sea temperature is 77.9, so we'll see how fast it goes up. That's an, an indicator of when you're in the Gulf Stream. Is, uh, the, Gulf Stream. We're getting quite the, boost, the water temperature gets goes up. Can't do it without the nutritional yeast. What, baby? I'm talking to the camera. I said you can't have pasta without the nutritional yeast. Yeah. Can you just give me one at a time? Cheers. Cheers, my love. It is much darker than this out here, but the camera can like see in the dark kind of. <laughs> So we have a, a proximity alarm. The boat that is sailing off of our starboard bow looks like we're either looks like we're either gaining on him or he changed course a bit. And now we have a proximity alarm saying that in nine minutes we're going to pass about four tenths of a mile away from him. So I'm going to just give him a call and see what he's up to. Adonako, Adonako, Adonako. This is sailing vessel Sea Wind. Sea Wind, over. Sea wind, Danica, let's uh, go out to 1-7. 1-7. Sea wind, good evening. Good evening, how do you pronounce your name? It's uh, Adanico. Adanico, okay. Anyway, yeah, boy, beautiful night out here. We left at the same time. Yeah, I can see you over there. You're, I don't know how far, maybe three quarters of a mile, a mile over. 
Yeah, my uh, my radio went off with a proximity alarm. I don't transmit AIS, but I can see you on it, and uh, so I figured I'd give you a call. Yeah, where are you guys heading this evening, over? Port Lucaya, over. Yeah, Roger, same here. The Grand Bahama Yacht Club will uh, tie up there, get cleared in, over. What kind of boat? I saw it was a catch. Roger, yeah, we're uh, Hughes 40, catch with uh, uh, cutter rig. Copy that. We're on a 32-foot Allied Sea Wind cutter rig. Very nice. Yeah, I've, uh, a friend of mine had an Allied Princess 36. Beautiful boat. Yeah, I looked at the princesses before I found my Sea Wind up on the Great Lakes in Cleveland. Yeah, Roger. That's where we're from. The summer before we came down from uh, Georgian Bay over. Oh, we've always wanted to go up to the Georgian Bay. Never made it off Lake Erie, though. It's good to see a northerner out here uh, enjoying the warm weather. Ah, uh, the first phone, or the first V8, the first phone call. just like that we have cruise ships all around us <laughs> that's a big cruise ship Norwegian Pearl I've been on the radio with him Katie just came up there she is it's midnight yep. how you feeling Biebs pretty good yeah you can see where we are we are I think on the other side of the Gulf Stream maybe did you get some sleep yeah. All right, I'm gonna go get some sleep. Well, actually, I might stay up until this damn cruise ship is clear of us. I can see that we're passing this by. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah. Doesn't look like it, but he's like nine tenths of a mile and he's passing right in front of us right now. He was very nice on the radio though. Yeah. Okay, good morning everybody. It is 4 a.m., 4.30 now. Katie just went off of watch. I actually slept a few hours, I think, so that was nice. We have a lot of commercial traffic. That guy right there, um, is a drift. It's a huge barge and uh, they're having engine issues and they're drifting actually. They were drifting at 0.8 knots, so not even, not quite a knot, towards us. And we had to kind of change uh, course to make sure that we didn't come too close to them. What we did was we, har we hardened up on everything and sailed upwind more at a more faster pace because the wind has shifted and so to stay on our course we have to be sailing fairly low around like 120 degrees to the uh, wind angle. I'll show you where we are on that. So we've had a really great night. We have 
17 miles to go, 18 miles to go, doing about four and a half knots and we are broad reaching now. This is our speed through the water. We're doing, this is about nine knots apparent. True wind speed is about 11. And that's what we're doing. So I'm going to uh, sit and wait for the sun to start coming up because we're facing east, well, a little northeast, so. Alrighty, everyone. We've had a wonderful night. We have sailed the entire way, no motor. And sea wind has finally dusted off the cobwebs and so have we. <laughs> well, it is just starting to hint at becoming light. And it looks like it is going to be a beautiful sunrise. There have been a few barges drifting. No engine. I'm not really sure what that's about. I've been on the radio a lot tonight, calling different ships, making sure they see us. I'm glad to see that our radar reflectors do their job. Every one of them said that they had me as a target on their uh, radar. That's good. <laughs> All right, we did it. So far, so good. First, we gotta go into the Grand Bahama uh, Yacht Club, and it is there where we will check in at the fuel dock with customs and immigration. So this will be a different experience, maybe. It says, um, we hear that they come down to your uh, boat, so that'll be kind of cool. In the meantime, look at this. Just wow. That is just beautiful. That sunset is just absolutely magnificent. Look at that. Look at that. Someone's awake. How are you, little Bob? I'm pretty good. Pretty good? Mm -hmm. Did you get some shut eye? A little bit. What are you doing there? Checking to see if we have SIM card over. So we have SIM cards for the local phone plan from last time we were here. So we're gonna put them in the phones and see if we can buy a phone plan, huh? Yeah. Cheers! This is freshly made iced espresso with a scoop oh, yeah. of oat milk with our brand new manual hand pump espresso maker. <laughs> and uh, we had we're almost what we're eight miles from the inlet. 
we have some friends we made. We saw them leaving Port Everglades the same time as us. We kind of checked in with each other throughout the night and they're right in front of us right now and they are having some engine troubles. So we turned on our engine because the wind is dying off. Um, we turned on our engine to get up closer to them to make sure that they can get um, into the inlet and to the dock safely. So. Cool. We're in the Bahamas. We're in the Bahamas. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. This is a flag. I mean, this is a cute, the cute flag. And we have to fly this as we enter any new country before we're checked in. It's called the quarantine flag, cute flag. Um, and so since we're now like on the coast of the Bahamas and we're about to come in the port, we're gonna put the cute flag up. Here you go. There you go, I see. Okay, that's the top. Yeah. Okay. Now tie it off in the seat. Nice job. I had my coffee and some yogurt, and I feel like a new person now. This is absolutely glorious. <laughs> you can start to see the bottom. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> We're sailing under Maine only. The entrance is right over here. We're behind them. We got the main way out. Threatening to jive, but I'm watching it closely. Okay, we'll see you at the dock. Okay, okay, we have made it. We are at the Grand Bahama Yacht Club fuel dock. This is the dock that they require you to pull up to to clear in with customs and immigration. He wants us to go now. Okay. Nice. All right. Okay, we let's gotta go. go. To our dock, 513. Okay, let's go. I'm trying to even think back, my brain is like mashed potatoes. Um, what do we do? Parker mixed a loaf of bread using our sourdough starter so he felt that was a more on that later priority <laughs> so we mixed a loaf of bread and i finished up some work and then we took the best like shower ever it was really so good nice pressure. really great water pressure like warm water we've been showering like we haven't had like a shower shower since i think new year's eve like you can stand under running water like that's a treat you yeah. know stand under hot running water like that's a tree it's not like all the time so it's been the first one in a few weeks so that felt really good and so then we got clean and um came back and we were so hungry because we're not the best at preparing food ahead of time for like passage making <laughs> We just literally never do we it. We just lit literally never do it. But So by being bad at it, we just don't do it. So we that's a priority for us this season is to make sure that like when we're preparing ourselves and preparing the boat and all of that for like a passage and stuff, it's just make sure we actually have like nutrient-dense snacks and easy-to-grab food and meals and stuff. Anyway, so Parker made a really great lunch. He powered through cooking. 
then we ate and then I sent him to the V-Birth to go lay down and I cleaned up and then I went up there and everything became a blur. We just literally passed out, so tired and we woke up at like six, like three hours later and the sun had just set and we were just like, <laughs> Parker even, we slept so hard, Parker was like, are we still in the Bahamas? That was funny, but that, we're still just like, we could just keep sleeping and sleeping and sleeping. That was the first big, I mean, that was the, big, the first sale we've done on Seaman this season, and it was like a really big one to start out with, you know, about 90 miles. Um, and so, especially like an overnight passage tends to mess you up more than like a multiple day passage because you don't have any routine you just kind of like you can try to have a watch schedule but you're it's just kind of like grabbing sleep when you can because you actually like work really hard like your body works really hard when you're sailing and stuff you're like staying up so more sleep more sleep but first just a kombucha regular kombucha to celebrate parker has a loaf of bread in the oven so Cheers. Mahalas. Raj. Chew. Gosh. We're walking about a mile and a half into town in search of SIM cards, the SIM cards that we had yesterday did not work. They expire after six months of non-use apparently. So we're on a mission. This place is a much, much different feel than Bimini, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Resort style, lots of land. We made it. Thank you very much. So one of the most interesting things is that well, you gotta look the opposite way because it's opposite side of the road driving here. We successfully got our SIM cards. Yep. Whoop, whoop. Snack time. Snack time. Going back to the boat. I need a snack, then I think we're gonna check out the pool. There's my two girls. Okay, we are back. Katie is starting the SIM card challenge. Will it work? I think they will. We had a good deal, two SIM cards and a plan for 30 bucks each. So we also stopped at the Solomon's grocery store and we found a few things. Um, I wanted some pumpkin puree, so I found some organic pumpkin puree for baking. And we found some pizza sauce, also organic. Both of them were on sale. And we got some planter's nuts, some organic yellow mustard, a few Pellegrinos for the walk back, and some flour. All right, so what we have going on here this evening, we are making a sweet potato curry. Um, right now, I have onions and garlic that I sauteed until translucent, and now I just added a bunch of fresh chopped tomatoes that I'm gonna cook down and let them get all nice and cooked. And then I'm going to add some coconut milk and some potatoes. I'm gonna make some rice, and we're gonna have a delicious, delicious, delicious meal. Are you hungry? She has her poker face on. She is showing no emotion. Oh yeah, look at all that goodness. Two tablespoons of curry powder. This is a spicy curry powder. And some black pepper. A little bit of fresh basil. 
chunky. Well, I'm filming you. The tables have turned. Literally because our table <laughs> turns. <laughs> it turns. Now tell us, Parker, what do we have for dinner? What did you cook for us? Well, you guys just saw me cook a sweet potato curry. Um, we didn't look up a recipe or anything. This is just kind of how we make our curry. It's a curry. yellow curry. It's a, yeah, it's a yellow curry. We found a really nice looking spicy yellow curry powder. And so that's what I made. And you guys know the ingredients because you just watched me. <laughs> <laughs> we had a really nice day. This is our kind of a, our day number one. First full day. First full day in the Bahamas. We have swam. Kay used her monofin. That was funny. You haven't really seen me cool. use my monofin yet. Yeah, I hadn't seen it before. We walked to the store. We successfully got our SIM cards today. This was like the... Yesterday was the official check-in day. This was like the the uh, secondary like check-in to the Bahamas where you go get a phone plan and scope out the place and get your bearings on some things and finally catch up on some sleep. And yeah, we're just here at the dock. We feel like now we're on vacation. Doesn't it feel like it kind of feels like we're yeah, on vacation? Yeah, except for the looming anxiety of the work week. Yeah, the work week, ahead. yeah, on Katie Mae. She has a, uh, what's called a strategy week this week. Um, I'll just be on Zoom calls a lot and it's stressful for me. Yeah, so. But Zoom calls in paradise. Paradise, yeah. Zoom calls in paradise. Okay. So, all right, we will see you guys. On the other side. On the flip side, yeah. Cheers. <laughs>